do is give a little synopsis of the video because when you know I don't want to waste people's time you know and they go oh I thought this was about this so I'll give a synopsis this entire video is about my struggle <laughs> by the way my struggle with installing the chimney and chimney support for the ceiling for the wood burning stove that will I will I'll put in the garage the wood burning stove that came out of the house when we got a new wood burning stove that stove I'm recycling and repurposing into the garage so it's about struggle if people like conflict and struggle boy this video is for you this is where we'll be working today out here on the roof on the roof to put uh, well I think today is just the day of putting the chimney in the garage so I have a wood stove so this is about wood stove installations today well now that uh, we got some wood the other day and I have to get some more this fall got it chopped and split and put away to dry for next winter the winter of 24 the chore now is getting this wood burner that was in the, in the main house but now we have a new one which is a soapstone and it's uh, situated more in the middle of the house this was in the corner in an addition but it's a perfect one to put in a garage uh, and oops I'll break my neck and uh, so today's chore and it should be a lot easier than, than the one in the house is to at least get it in through these two joists and you can see I put the first uh, back uh, support for the uh, box in there and now I've got to find center and out there to drill a hole I put a screw up through it the roof so I can cut a hole from the outside yesterday there I just had one support on the back here in and I framed in this whole box to use for this support for the chimney and as you up top you can see that it goes all the way to the roof the bottom side that's to keep if I decide to do blow-in insulation that's to keep it away from the pipe itself now I'll just review shortly to um, center this box and build this frame around it and hopefully you can see some of it on the other camera but to build this frame first I had to find a distance from the wall measure that on the stove first off looking at the recommendations from the back of the stove for clearances so once I got those clearances I even added a little bit because this will be a workshop so what I did first was I made that measurement and I put a piece of wood across the trusses and I found center between the trusses and placed this piece of wood at the center of the pipe measured from the wall 24 and a half inches then I made side marks I don't know if you can see them for the half of the size of the box and the other side half the size of the box then what I did after I've made this measuring stick and got it placed properly for the center of the pipe, I took a string line, well, and I used it to go up on the ceiling and to find and have this plumb bob string line 
find the center of that board. Pretty good idea about where I should be. So what I did was I found center line. Oops, let me see if you can see that better. And used that to once I had it marked on this the the wood to the middle, I just used the plumb bob until I was right on the center line, and then I marked the roof, the under the roof. I marked, and then I put a screw through there. So a screw on the center which would be back about eight inches to the middle. That screw goes up through the ceiling and the shingles. So I can, when I get up there, I can see exactly where I'm supposed to be and cut this hole for this so that I can do it quickly. Cut the roof, put the flashing on, lift the shingles, put the flashing on, and then put the first section of pipe down onto this support. Then do all the flashing, put the second piece on the cap and uh, put some high, t high temp uh, silicone on the, on the pipe to seal it up and then put a, a, a collar on it. Now typically on these boxes, sometimes like in our house, the box is actually doesn't go all the way up to the roof. It's just up a certain way. So in my case, this is an easier install and I can put it firm against the roof so I don't need a cap for it for the blown in insulation. The way I had to cut that box down uh, and the proper angle of the roof. And so it fit up there tight and there's no way insulation could get in there. But there is a piece I was trying to figure out, what is this for? Well, finally it came to me, this isn't for the roof. Here's my flashing, here's my pipe, here's my storm collar, there's my inside expandable pipe and one on the stove. So this here apparently is, if you're gonna have blown in insulation, you put a box up, this is to cover the box. So you put it on there and so it doesn't get down in the box. But I'm not gonna use that today. Now, this isn't final. And so I wanna measure a piece, another two by four, because I'm gonna take the opportunity to put one in here so that I can screw to this box. As soon as I cut that hole, I'll have room to screw into this two by four I'm about to put in and these two by fours that I framed out for this box. So right now, that's the next step. Now keep in mind, I'm not the ultimate professional uh, to tell you how to do this, but I do read instructions and in fire code. So spacing and clearances to combustible materials is critical. That's why I said we have to go in the back of the stove, find out what the clearance is for the stove and for the pipe is. I'm using, uh, for the stove down below, I'm using double wall pipe, triple wall up top through this box. And so I'm measuring for this and it's a tight 22 and a half. All right, I didn't bore you with uh, the details of cutting two boards. And these are actually leftovers. So you see that they had been they had been ripped to a certain size at one time, but they'll work perfect for this. That's my modus operandi is is always using leftover materials for these little jobs. So I need to hammer this up to the ceiling. But these two pieces up on the roof will give do two purposes. I can screw the support box into them up top, just like I can screw them in down here. But the other thing is to support the roof. The roof on this, the roof, roof was a bit spongy, I noticed. 
but this was earlier in my building and I can't show you right here, but I don't know if you can see it, but on the seams, the OSB seams, I didn't put clips, support clips on it. And I wanted to make sure when I cut a hole this big that the, the roof even has some support. So anyway, I've got support up top, in the back, uh, all this around it. And now I can, after they're having breakfast, I can go out. And I also use leftover materials, but typically overbuild. So I'm putting these in with these crazy GRKs. They'll hold like 5,000 pounds. No country for old men. So anyway, well, it's time to go up on the roof. Roof. And this is the stuff that's kind of tough on an old man. Climbing the ladders and... You know, cutting the, like I cut these trees down over here, and I still have a couple left to go. As you can see, I did a little damage to the gutter. I don't know if you can see it from here. But um, first off, uh, get everything on the roof, all the stuff I'll need to cut the hole, mark the hole and everything. And of course, set up cameras, which will be interesting. And, uh, so we'll go from there. I'll uh, start this back up once I get her going. Well, hopefully you can hear me okay. I have, uh, I guess I can put up my, my H1N1 here quickly. Uh, up here on the roof, I guess through my phone, it doesn't hook up Bluetooth. It hooks up via Wi-Fi and Wi-Fi was good to the edge of the roof but Wi-Fi was good to the edge of the roof but uh, it's not good up on the roof I need to get a better mesh network piece but I thought finding the screw would be simple boy was I wrong here's the screw you know this dark color I figured this would show up like Nobody's business. Crazy. But let me see. I'll do the best I can with the camera I have. So what I got to do is I need to make a 14 inch, 14 inch hole. And I don't have a a device good enough for that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure out seven inches on this I got my little bucket of tools here I got everything that I hope don't slide off the roof some weight in my bucket or it will slide off the roof. Boy, it's a lot of work. This is a lot for an old man to do, man. So what I'm hoping is I can take a nail and scratch a, a cut line, hoping scratch a cut line seven inches seven inches out so that's what I'm going to try to do give me a 14 inch circle first off um, doing this is going to be pretty pretty technical so I'm going to wrap this a few times have it on the screw that I put through the roof and and really what I'm trying to show on this is that even when you're in your 70s you can try to
Well, that should be a pretty decent circle for a 14 inch hole for that pipe to give it the proper clearances and everything. Well, that should be a pretty decent circle for a 14 inch hole for that pipe to give it the proper clearances and everything. So I'm gonna put this tape away. And then my thought was what I'll do is just use the skill saw. I have a battery operated one to cut a good chunk of this out. Well, it appears that it might have worked. I cut this square out and I will come back and uh, cut the circle. As you can see the scribe, I might scribe it again now that it's a little messed up, but it appears that I am pretty much smack dab in the middle of the support box, which is extremely good. And as you can see, you know, old man in his mid seventies up on a roof, climbing around, probably not the smartest thing in the world, but at least I know now we're in good shape here. Cut with the saws all, done with the saws on the roof. They're, you know, Try to film and do this crazy stuff all at one time, which is, I don't know, it's a little crazy. But we got the hole, and I lifted some of these shingles. And I don't want to lose my bucket. So I'm really leery of that. So I'm going to see if I lifted the shingles far enough. And the answer is no. Okay. Left. <laughs> well, <clears throat> it looks like I'm going to have to cut those shingles back a little more. I was trying to eyeball it with my eye and then I finally had to use this plumb bub. And I have to go back at least oh, several inches. So I'm gonna have to do some more trimming on the shingles and pulling them up. That's all there is to it. Like I said, no country for old men. That's for sure. So anyway, I've got to put this <coughs> storm collar on and caulk it, figure out how big a storm collar I need, and get on my ass again. I'll cut a little of this off. Well, I'll be darn. That says a little bit about these little cameras. I was taking the, I'm all done with cutting, so I was, I was taking the extension cords down from the roof up there, and I went to toss, toss the cords down, and sure enough, it grabbed my little camera which as you can tell is hooked to the front of my chest right now and it went flying down on the concrete driveway Jimmy and me a mid 70s old man climbing up on rooftops dragging equipment around and cameras by the way which is really tough to do while you're trying to get work done and you're not used to doing it and about age 
I'm a Christian and I love to compare stories from the Bible to my current situation. So yesterday, I studied Nehemiah, who rebuilt the walls of Jerusalem. And there's a whole story about that and all he had to go through to rebuild the walls. I was curious, well, how old is Nehemiah when that, and he was rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem? And as near as I can tell from the exile of Babylon, Nehemiah was born in, under exile in Babylon, became a cupbearer, and rebuilt the walls in 444 BC. So it was basically 153 years that whole time. So, but he was born uh, in, under exile. So I estimated he is my age, 74. Old man, uh, maybe older, uh, when he rebuilt the walls. So I do that thinking, well, if Nehemiah can do it, I can do it. So I got my butt up on the roof of the garage and put in this chimney. So I hope you enjoy the video. And you know, I haven't been asking for subscribe and like, press the bell icon. I have little things in the video for that, but I haven't been doing that. So, 